Hi everybody, Shabbat Shalom. Thank you for finding the time in your very busy vacation schedules to join us in the study of Torah. I'm really delighted to be able to share these very special moments with you each week. We are literally on our march toward Rosh Hashanah. This week we read the second of the seven haftarot of consolation that mark the path between Tisha B'Av and the new year 5778. Our Torah text today is Akev, beginning with Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 12. Akev Tishma'un. Moses promises blessing to the people if they observe the divine commandments, but balances the joy of those blessings with the real threat as to what will occur if the people prove to be unfaithful to God. We are told that if we warned God's favor and our lives are filled with blessings, then va'achalta, v'savata, uve'rachta et Adonai Elohecha. So then, when you have eaten your fill, do not then fail to give thanks to the eternal your God for the good land which has been given to you. This verse, verse by the way, v'achalta, v'savata, ve'rachta, that verse is actually the foundation upon which the entire structure of what we call Birkat Hamazon, the grace after meals, is constructed. It all comes from our passage. So what's the, the big insight here? Don't forget to say thank you. Now, we used to remind our kids about that all the time, whether or not we knew that the Torah was commanding us to do so. You probably did or you probably will do the same uh, with your own children. In some families, the opening of Hanukkah gifts and, and, and birthday presents is spread out over several days. Quote, kids, you cannot open more presents than those for which you can write thank you notes or, or send texts or emails or post Facebook comments on that very same day. If you can write three of those messages, open three presents, if you write four, you can open four, but thank yous had to happen immediately. Saying thank you is a very traditional middle-class value, closely associated in our minds, at least, with good parenting and with nurturing a sense in those dependent upon us that good things are not automatic. They are not givens in our world. Saying thank you, by the way, is a very highly regarded Jewish value. The great Torah commentator Nechama Leibowitz points out to us that in our world there are two huge categories of things for which we ought to feel a sense of gratitude. One category, it's a pretty easy one, is for the gift of nature. In the last several years, Risa and I have focused on visiting many uh, of the national parks. We have been privileged to travel in many parts of our world, but now we want to focus more on homegrown miracles. You cannot hike into the presence of Old Faithful in Yellowstone or to be at Yosemite and to stand before those incredible falls or at Sequoia to encounter the majesty of trees whose tops seem to touch the very, very reaches of heaven and not have an overwhelming desire to say thank you to some thing, to someone. Thank you. Thank you for all of this magnificence. There are multiple Jewish prayers that are available to us in such circumstances. Shekach aloba ulamo, or zocher abrit, or semas abreshit, depending upon what it is that we happen to be looking at. A rainbow, a, a tree exploding with fruits, vines burgeoning with large clusters of grapes, those purple mountains majesty the waves crashing atop a stormy sea, a beautiful gemstone harvested from beneath tons and tons of stone and rock, a baby breathing comfortably shortly after birth, a feeling of love that is totally overwhelming. This is part of our natural world, and it's awesome. Think about what goes into a body so that following the dictates of uh, DNA and genetics, it can grow, differentiate, mature, fight off disease, reproduce itself, and even age and die. Think about how exotic plants in the Amazon basin can yield critically important medicines or how certain mold produces penicillin or when solar eclipses like the one coming up in August 
can prove or prove once again the accuracy of Einstein's theories regarding the bending of light. What a world! Thank you! Thank you! But there is a second category of things for which we ought to also feel a sense of gratitude. For all of that which we produce out of our own labor, our own passion, from the sweat of our own brows. Think about all that goes into making a nutritious, good tasting, attractive meal. From planting and nurturing and harvesting to preparing and setting a gracious table and in my family then to wash dishes, that's my job. Think about what it takes to teach an effective lesson to students. The years of experience, the thought, trial and error with new techniques, checking in with mentors, recognizing our failures, locking in which things which tend to produce great success, a lot of work. Think about what it takes to launch a successful startup. Insight, passion, partnerships, hardcore persistence, dreams that won't die, knowing what you know, knowing what you don't know, uh, not being crushed as one dream after another crashes and burns. A certainty that somehow you do know more about something maybe than anyone else on earth. I was shocked, but maybe I shouldn't, not all that much, that universities now offer academic majors in entrepreneurship. Success is just not easily achieved. Think about what it takes to grab hold of a cause of social justice and to lift that cause up not only into broad visibility, but to give it a sense of urgency and of abiding significance. But there are so many causes in our world, so much injustice, so many unmet needs. But you have a parent deep in the throes of Alzheimer's or of Parkinson's, or you yourself suffered from racial or gender prejudice, or you're not willing to allow the federal government to forget its obligation to preserve the magnificence of nature in all of its variations. And then somehow your cause through you becomes a movement, it catches fire, it grows, it makes a difference. Whom do you think? Where do you direct your appreciation? Your, your startup goes public, your classroom is suddenly alive with anxious learners. And that meal gracing your table is a marvel to behold. Well, whom do we thank? The book of Psalms chapter 90 addresses God precisely about this issue. Please, eternal one, establish the work of my hands. God, you, please, establish the work of my hands. Leibowitz says that often it is a great deal easier to see the involvement of God in the wonders of nature than in the work of our own hands. We can gaze about at our successes and be filled with self-importance, with overwhelming pride, with an attitude that all of us, all of us had flowed to us simply because we are that much better than anyone else. We look in the mirror and we see Narcissus. We look about our achievements and feel that we have earned a golden ticket to Olympus. And that is why among all of the other blessings that we have available, there is one that reads, thank you God for your miracles that are with us every day. It's breathtaking, think about it. Thank you, God, for your miracles that are with us every day. We are forbidden to claim that my power and the might of my hand achieved all of this. In Jewish tradition, arrogance and pride are forms of idolatry that our tradition asserts God actively despises. No matter what our theology, we can all find transcendence in what we call the natural world. It's great out there. Our Sedra also wants us to find transcendence in the day-to-day, -day, our successes in the great and small, 
and to refuse to be seduced into believing that somehow all of this exists because I just happen to be so great. So, thank you again, my friends. You make our weekly study so very special. I know it. Consciously, I say to you, thank you. Have a wonderful Shabbat. Oh, please, please, hit share, and then I'll see you next week. Shabbat Shalom.